not going to crash course calculus, everybody. We're about a fourth of the way through the year right now, and chances are you're probably not doing too well. So today we're going to talk about derivatives, which should help you. To start, we're going to talk about the average velocity. Basically, this is just the slope between two points. Now, derivatives are a little different of a function because they show you the instantaneous velocity, which is the slope at any given point on the, on the function. These are also known as tangent lines. So, to determine the tangent lines, you have f of x equals f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Now, why does this apply, or how does this work? To find the instantaneous velocity of given x, you're going to want to first find the average velocity, and then use the limit to approach it of the x value itself. So if we take a given interval of h, then we have a point x plus h, with the y value being f of x plus h and this value being f of x. So as you can see, this now applies here because it's basically the slope formula, but as it approaches zero, this x value, I mean this h value, the area between the two points gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So the average velocity becomes the instantaneous velocity. Now let's see how we apply it to a function. If we have the um, function f of x equals x to the third, Plugging it into the formula here, then expanding it out, you get this really complicated stuff that just takes a lot of time. So then, once you expand everything from the x to the x plus h to the third, you can go ahead and cancel out the x to the third with the x to the third. Then in the next step, bring out an h from all the terms, canceling out with the bottom. Now you can actually insert the zero so that it's not um, h over, I mean, h equals zero on the denominator. And then once you plug in the zero, you basically cancel out anything with an h in it. So this doesn't really matter, this doesn't really matter, and this doesn't really matter. So you're left with x squared plus 2x squared, which would be 3x squared. Okay, now. That takes way too much time, so the geniuses in math department, or in history or whatever, came up with a shortcut method. This shortcut method is basically ax to the a minus 1. So in a sense, it's just the exponent taken out front and then subtracted from the term. So if you look, x to the third, the derivative you take the exponent, bring it out front to be a coefficient, and then subtract one from itself. So, 3x squared. And if you'll notice, it's the same answer as from our example with the limit, but it took way less time. So. Our next example, f times x. The original function is 4x to the fifth plus 5x to the fourth. You use the same method, take the exponent and multiply it out front to the coefficient, 5 times 4, this would be 20x, subtract 1, which would be 4, plus 5 times 4, 20x to the third. Now, once we get to more complicated x values, if we were given something in parentheses like x plus 1 or 3x squared or anything um, that's not a single value, then you wouldn't be able to just do the same um method where you take the exponent out and subtract one. You also have to take the derivative of the inside um, portion. So, for example, rather than just having x squared here, we have 3x plus 1 squared. So, f prime of x equals exponent out front to the normal x value inside 3, oh, 3x plus plus 1, and then this 2 becomes a 1, so you don't really have to write it, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the 1, any um, any uh, standard value, any just gosh, constant, 
that's what I was looking for. Any constant just goes away, um, and then any single x value just becomes uh, the three. So if you simplify it more, you would have six, three x plus one as your three. Now moving on to some more complicated equations, the product rule would apply for any anything where a group of terms is multiplied by another group. So you know when you like foil out like x plus one and then three x squared, or well, plus four or something. This is kind of a similar thing. You can't just, you can't use any of the shortcut or chain rule methods. So you would want to do the first term, in this case x, times the derivative of the second, plus the second term, in this case y, times the derivative of the first. So this would look like x to the fifth, times the derivative of x plus 1, which would just be 1 from the x, and then plus the second x plus 1 times the derivative of the first. So using the shortcut, it would be 5x to the fourth. And then you can simplify that out, but that's basically And now, similarly so to the product rule, the quotient um, would apply when you were dividing two groups of terms by each other. So this would be the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. So for this function f of x equals 3x squared over x plus 1, we would have bottom x plus 1 times the derivative of the top. So using the shortcut, multiply out 6x and then subtract 1, so just 1 minus top 3x squared times the derivative of the bottom. So x plus 1, the derivative would just be 1. All over x plus 1 squared. And you could just simplify that out, but it would take a lot more work. And typically with the quotient rule, you would end up having things that cancel out with the top, cancel out within the top and with the bottom, because it makes it a lot simpler to solve and, you know. Simplicity is key. Anyway, um, not to go off on a tangent, but you might also want to know these um, trig and ln rules for derivatives. Okay. Moving on to how derivatives apply to your original function. Okay. Your first derivative tells you the minimums and maximums. You can figure this out by understanding how the derivative of each point um, actually applies to a minimum or a maximum. So if you have the instantaneous velocity of like random points on a graph, and then you realize they're all like four over five or three, or it's like the slope of any point. But at minimums and maximums, you're not actually, uh, that's not, okay, whatever. So like, your slope is at zero because you're peaking. So your instantaneous velocity at minimums and maximums is equal to zero because it's right at the top and that's the only point it touches would be at a zero slope. So all you have to do is solve for zero. Now, when we use our sine line test, that's to determine increasing and decreasing. If you take, after you solve for zero, you want to put your numbers up on the sine line test, and then determine whether or not this points before, or numbers before or after these zeros are positive or negative. And you do that by plugging the numbers into your derivative. Basically, this tells you what the slope, what the slope is doing at each like given interval. So if we had just a given function, your slope, if your slope was positive, it would mean your instantaneous velocity would look the mo like follow the graph in this way, meaning the original graph would be increasing. And then conversely, 
if your instantaneous velocity was negative, that would mean it would follow your graph downward and your slope would be decreasing. So that's everything you need to know for calculus derivatives.